Turn your Bibles with me into the book of Luke, the 11th chapter. This morning we're continuing our series called Expectations. And we started with this verse, and, and give your attention to the screens in front of you. It says in verse 9, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. The series is based upon those three words, ask, seek, and knock. Last week we talked about ask. There's days in our lives that we do not ask according to God's will in our lives. We find that many times in our lives that there's, a, there's something missing. And, and in the sense of something's missing, what are we searching for? What are you seeking for within your life? Expectations is a, is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. A belief that someone will or should achieve or receive something. Today, I'm suggesting to you That you increase your expectations. That you start expanding your beliefs in what God will do. In my office, one of the whiteboards that I have, there's a listing of things in my life that I'm trying to teach a few men and women that I am mentoring. And it's talking about blue sky thinking. To dream big. To not limit God on what we think he can do. Let us take off our limitations of who God is and start seeking for the better in our lives. Start seeking for those, those promises that God's already given us. If we look at what God wants to do in our lives instead of what we want God to do in our lives... We will find that there is a difference there. And many times, the difference is what God wants to do is greater than what you want. I'm not waiting for you to say amen. I'm waiting for you to realize that's a true statement. We ask, we ask with confidence. We ask with humility, knowing that if we ask, God is faithful to give. But what are you searching for? What are you seeking in your life? What is lost within you? What is it? Is it God himself? Is it love? Is it compassion? Is it your caring? What have you lost within your life? Have you lost your passion to serve? Have you lost your passion to follow him? Have you found yourself feeling like you're empty, that there's a void within you? What are you searching for to place there? Because by experience, I know, we know, everybody in here knows that you can't fill your life with sex, drugs, and alcohol, and the things of corruption, and expect to fill on yourself being filled with the joy. And the joy only comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength to get through life. So what have we lost? Don't use this reference very often, but Peter Pan. One guy lost his marbles. He was constantly searching for his lost marbles. I remember a time that I'd lost something very valuable to me. And I searched and I searched and I searched. And do you know where I found it? In the last place I looked. Come on, think about that for a moment. <laughs> the last place I looked is where I found what I had lost. See, this morning I, I asked that you just take some time to evaluate yourself. Because there's not a single person here not standing upon this platform or sitting in these seats or working in the coffee house or working with our children downstairs. None of us have arrived. 
there are still things within our life that God wants to place within our hands, within our hearts, within our minds to accomplish for the glory of the kingdom. I've watched people search to try to find happiness. Happiness sometimes is fleeting because happiness is based upon what happens or what you receive. I've ser- searched myself for love and I found that without godly love first in my life, no other love even comes close or compares to what I need. The Word of God in Matthew chapter 6 Verse 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What things? See, God knows what you need before you ever ask. So God is asking you to search after his kingdom, to seek after his kingdom first. Again, I stated, there's times that we just want what we want, but God has something better for you. God wants to bless you in such a way that it's overwhelming in your mind to even try to comprehend. But God really wants to bless you. It says in Luke chapter 15. And it says, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. And Christ says, And likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We're living in a world where so many people are lost. There's days in your lives that you will look in the mirror And you question who you are. Why? Because the world is out consuming. The enemy is out seeking whom he may devour. See, the enemy will never stop. He never takes a nap. He doesn't find himself slumbering somewhere. The enemy is out trying to catch you with your guard down and away from God. And when he does, he will take you. And how he, t- he, he literally baits us. And he places things within our lives, and that's called temptations. And if we accept the bait, if we take that temptation and apply it into our lives, we start to find that it's real easy to sin because of the temptation. But you have the ability not to be sinful. You have the ability to live a righteous life. All because temptations come does not mean that you have to fall prey to that. What do you need to do within your own house? Now, I'm going to mess with somebody here. How much time do I got? According to that clock, it's already past noon. <laughs> but I'm going to mess with somebody. You know what's in your house. You know what's going on. When was the last time you cleaned it up to find what was lost? What's in your life that you know that you've lost? If it's that, truly again, if it's a passion for God, if it's that sense of ministry, if it's your purpose, what have you lost? That you need to diligently start cleaning out those things that clutter your life. How many does a spring cleaning at home? Let me re-ask that. How many should have a spring cleaning at home? (laughs) What do you do? Meticulously, I go through what is most important for me. Now, everybody heard that, right? I start with what is most important to me. My wife wants to do what is most important to her. So what usually happens is we just go off to breakfast and forget about it. (laughs) But I say that to make you smile a little bit for you to get serious. 
What have you lost? What has been lost in your life? What has been lost in your relationship? What's been lost in the purpose of who you are? See, the Word of God says, if you seek, you will find. But what are you looking for? Are you looking for what God wants for you? Because there's some days, all we have to do is just open up who we are. And simply ask, God, speak to me. God, show me the way. This morning, God spoke into the hearts, and I saw men and women across this sanctuary literally find themselves crying before God. Because this morning, I can tell you without any reservation, every need you have can be found in Christ Jesus. Every need within your life can be found in Christ Jesus. You got, you got questions? The Word of God is filled with every answer that you have need of. See, when we come into the house, we, we know that there's a purpose within all things. But we have to decide within ourselves what is important. See, we're sitting here today in the house of God, like it is happening all over the nation, all over the world, that we've come together, we've joined together. Today, we have been extremely blessed with the presence of God and God already doing mighty things. But there's other churches that will have people come into the midst of it and they wonder, are they going to receive what they come expecting? Matthew chapter 13, verses 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid, and for the joy over it, he goes and he sells all that he has and buys that field. Verse 45, another parable. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The world has a lot to offer. But it does not offer the promises of God. So what we need to do is to get rid of the things of the world that draws us. And we need to draw into the place that God desires us to be. We have to have that hope within ourselves that through it all. That we see the importance and the value of who God is. Now I'm going to give you another scripture. It's not going to be on the screen in front of you. But you will know it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but yet lose his own soul? This morning as individuals walked in, not going to have Roger stand up, but Roger has always impressed me with his ability to dress past the nines He, he's looking sharp all the time. And I had 6'10 come in, and, and, and he's all dressed, and I just looked at him, and I thought, I can pop my collar too. <laughs> the value of who we are has never been on what's on the outside. I know, looking kind of cute up here in this suit, I know. (laughs) But my value is not what's on the outside. My value is not in the home that I live or the cars that I drive or the toys that I have. My value is not based upon my bank account or my ability to do anything. My, My value is found when I look into the eyes of Christ and Christ looks at me and says, I gave it all for you. Our value is based upon who he is and to whom that you and I belong to. That's where our value is. So the value of this world, if we're trying to to get up the successful ladder, if we're trying to obtain, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but if that's the only goal that you have is to find yourself climbing in man's eyes, you will miss the mark of selling it out 
to the world and finding Jesus to be your whole source. He is our source. He's the very air that we breathe. The Word of God brings us life every single day. So what do we do? How do we find ourselves? Turn to Psalms. Psalms 42. It's going to come on the screens in front of you. And it says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? God is saying this morning, search after me. Draw close to me and I will draw close to you. You search after me. The emptiness that you may feel, the, 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 the little bit of slack or a whole lot of slack that you feel within your life is based upon where God is in the midst. You can say amen or oh me, but the facts are, if you are not where you need to be in the presence of God, you need to search for it. You need to put forth every effort. Like something was lost and she swept her house as they sold everything they had to buy the field or they sold all that they have to buy that one great pearl. What are you willing? What are you willing to give up to find the power and the presence of God in your life? See, I know what I was. And every one of you sitting here, you know what you was. And you know who you are today. But as I stated, we haven't arrived. There's still progress and there's still promises to be fulfilled. There's still the things of God wanting us and desiring us to do for him and for the kingdom's sake. To God be the glory in all things. So we search. How does a deer search for water? With intents. A deer searches for the hunger within to be fed. Look at the next passage of scripture. In Psalm 63. It says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My, thir- my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water... It's only God that can make you whole. I love this part. Early will I seek you. It gives us an understanding that it's important that we start our day searching after God from the very beginning that we wake up. Well, pastor, you don't know what my day is. Make God a priority, and I'm encouraging you, if you want to be better, if you will just start expecting God to fulfill his promises in your life, you need to start expecting When you call upon the name of the Lord for healing, expect it to be healed. Well, pastor, it doesn't happen all the time. I know. I I had someone ask me, why isn't some people healed while others are? I don't know. But I do know this. God is in control. It's not the lack of what we have done or, or what we have done that makes God's hand move. It's what God chooses, and I stand upon that promises, and I'm facing some rough things myself. I got people that I truly love that are passing away, that are struggling with their finances, that are struggling in relationships, and I pray for them, and I pray for them, and I pray for them, but I expect every time I say it that God will do it. It's not a lack of my searching of him. It's not a lack of his faithfulness to me. It's not a lack of faithfulness to you. But God is still in control. But early in the morning we rise and we seek God and we find that through the day we have purpose in him. There was a famous quote. And he said, I have so much to do today. I will start by spending hours in prayer. In the presence of Of our enemies, the word of God says he's prepared a table for you and I. That we can come and we can sit and we can rest and find nourishment. And we have this opportunity to consume with the Father. Come to the piano, Miss Jen. The last scripture. Psalms 105.
just glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice. Read it with me. Who seek the Lord. Repeating verse 3. Glory in his holy name. But the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Back several weeks ago, I preached a series that God laid upon my heart about the harvest and what are we planning? What, what, are, what is our harvest? What are we intending to receive in our harvest? In my time of prayer in this series, I ask, seek, knock. We ask because we have a need. We seek because we've lost something. Some of you may be sitting here and saying, Pastor, I don't know what I've lost. For those, I encourage you, if you don't know what you've lost, did you ever have it? Hmm. That's a solemn thought, isn't it? I don't know what I've lost. Well, did we ever have it? But my challenge to you today is what are you expecting God to do? What is it? Expectations. I remember a time that we would take trips as I was a young, just a young boy. I was really never little. I was just a young. And we would go down to my Uncle Jim's and my Aunt Myrtle's. I was 16 years old before they ever had water that existed in their house. And my Aunt Myrtle was just a few days short of her 80th birthday before she would ever allow a toilet to come in. And I remember getting so worked up. Literally, we would drive from the Alton area in Illinois down to southern Illinois. They lived down there in the Shawnee National Forest. And I would get so worked up that by the time we got there, I was physically sick because I was expecting to do all the things that we've always done. Ride the horses. Go hunt squirrels. My Uncle Jim was part of a group that would flip rocks over and catch rattlesnakes and milk them. And I enjoyed that from a distance. (laughs) But I was expecting all this greatness And you know that after I got there, I laid down with a cold rag on my head. When I woke up, everything I was expecting to do started to happen. We used to have revivals all the time in churches. And people would come in and they would be healed and they'd be filled with the baptism. And, and, and strangers, sinners would come and they would give their heart to the Lord. Why was it so empowerful? Why was it so impacting? Because everybody showed up expecting. Expecting God. What would happen in your life if tomorrow morning when you wake up, you expect God to be God in everything? And you can say, well, Pastor, I've tried this and I've tried that. Let's just let God be God. Let us seek for His hand. Because you know what, Adam? I'd much rather have what's in His hand than what I possess. I can find myself as the Apostle Paul says, there's some days we just beat against the wind. And we find ourselves tired in the midst of our 
accomplishment that never accomplishes anything. Let God be God. Next weekend, we'll talk about knocking and the persistence of how we have to stand at the door some days for the promises of God to be fulfilled. We just stand there and we got to knock. But today, my challenge to you as we get ready to stand, please stand. I thank you for giving me enough time to bring what God wanted you to hear. But today, what are we searching for? What are we seeking? God is faithful. So be in agreement with this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, increase our faith. God, help us move past our unbelief into believing that you are more than enough. God, for every person here that needs you to be real in their life, God, I want you to show up like a movie crew in their house and let their life be shown about on who you are in it. God, I pray that you would bless each one that is a blessing to someone else in such a way that they cannot deny that your hand of provision is not in their life. God, let our thirst and our hunger increase for you, Lord, and let us stand upon your promises, believing because your word says so that it is so. That it is so. And Lord, there's some that just simply needs to be wrapped with your loving arms, kissed with your tender mercies, and held close by the grace of who you are. Now, Lord, find us faithful in all things. In Jesus' name.